are uh, Paul Dixon and Robert uh, Buck and so I'll call a meeting of order now at 6 30 p.m. Agenda is uh, approval of the minutes, and I think we have two sets of minutes to, to go through. Um, so, can I get a motion to probably ought to start with the, is it the sixth was the October sixth minutes? Or um, I should bring it down. So we've got two sets of minutes. Can somebody remind me which? So, eleven six is one. Sorry, November 6th. 11-6 and 11-13. So uh, let's start with 11-6. If I have a motion to approve or that we can discuss. So a motion on the 11-6 minutes from Charlie. Second by Charlie. Uh, any discussion, uh, questions, revisions? Could you spell my name J-O-N? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. That's my only one. It's always the name. <laughs> it's always the name. Always the name. Any other discussion? I think you spelled it wrong, too. How did you spell it? Did I put an H or no H? Is it just one E? No, I think it's two G's it in it. Is it two E's? In G-A-N? Okay. So. I think so. You can just check that. I did. We just verified that's all. Okay. I, I might be wrong. I thought it was just one. Any other discussion? Uh, all in favor of approving? Say aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's done. Uh, next one would be the 11 uh, 13 minutes. Um, the motion to accept. Charlie. Second from Angela. Uh, any discussion? I wasn't sure. here, but I just noticed that we, we referred to what Kate is Karen at some point. The, the name, it's the name. <laughs> <laughs> so, minor, minor thing, I think everybody knew what it was all about, but officially. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. That's right. Um, all in favor of approving? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Order of business is done. <coughs> the next item is uh, budget presentations, and we're starting with the uh, library. So, Pam, come up. And if, and if anybody doesn't already have a hard copy, um, there's one here. Okay. I was Library Director um, couldn't be here tonight, so I am the chair of the Board of Library Trustees. And um, when we meet at our monthly meeting every month, we, we all review the budget every month and we, you know, kind of put on our things to go along. Um, I am not an absolute expert, so there may be questions that you have that I will have to answer for you. But Sarah did prepare a couple of highlights for you that I can read off my sheet, and then I'll be able to answer what I can. Um, the 2020 budget is a 3.85 increase from the 2019 budget. The 2020 uh, rent, if you didn't own the library, we rent from the Carter Family Properties. Um, he normally does a 5% increase, and we talked him down this year because we did some renovations to our space, and it will be a 2.12 increase for 2021. The 
2020 director salary was increased at 2% based on the projected federal cost of living increase. The actual increase announced to be 1.6 in October, but the budget had already been prepared in July. I don't know what the town plans to do, but typically the library matches whatever raise we were all doing for all the other directors and, and the managers of departments in town, and this <coughs> can make sense. Um, the Atrium software line reflects what we actually paid in 2019 for the software um, with functionality that is required. And basically what that means is um, over the last two years, we had to upgrade our software in the library to manage the collection in order to participate with the state library system. Um, we are in great standing with the state library and have access to collections of every other library in the state through the interlibrary loan system. Our books have to be cataloged in a certain way in order for us to be part of their larger statewide software program, and that's what that uh, software is for. So when we started the library, we had a very basic pedestrian version of well, library management software that was super cheap, because that's what we could afford at the time, and that cost is, I think, stabilizing now that we have this new software in place and we kind of know what the expense is going to be year to year. So it's only been in place for, I think, last year was the first year, and then the, the portion of this year that's gone by, so we should probably have that pretty stabilized after, after this year. Um, program and services increased by less than 1%, and the 2020 budget was created based on the real spending in 2019. Um, and for anyone who is not familiar with how our budget works, um, we need to include everything in the budget that we spend, even if it's offset by uh, revenue that the library receives for donations or um, from the friends group that supports us or our book sale, because all of those are unpredictable amounts of money that we may get year to year, year. They're never the same. Um, but that's included in the actual numbers of the budget, and then the offsetting is at the bottom. So I think that's what she means by that, is what we, what we really spent on things in 2019, what we based it on the budget on. So that's what I have. <coughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Do you know why there's a discrepancy between your total here and what we're seeing in the town? Unless I'm not reading it correctly. Yes, it's on page 8, and it is. Uh, is it on page 8? No, it's on page 9. I think it's page 9, actually. Page 9, and it's line 255. And I'm reading. A total of 8,935, and this is 81,213. I don't know. I, I don't have anything to do with how you put that together. It's on the employment one. So if you look at this worksheet and then this one, it's off that difference. And it's on I'm sorry, it's what? It's on the employment section. So if you look at <clears throat> those, it is, it is from one version of ours to the next. Yes, yeah, so okay. this version has yeah. 81210, but this one has 8935. Okay. And the section that's off is the same place. Okay, so what, what is the actual figure that the library uh, is proposing? <coughs> Whatever your latest version of it is, it could be the sheet I brought you tonight, which is probably the one that's different from what got. Is this the number that's in your, in your town budget? This older one? Does that match? I think we just got them at the same time. Yeah, the electronic one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we got them at the same time. It's the same. Okay. I can ask Sarah what what the what so right now we're gonna assume that the that the figure that's at the bottom of the summary, which does equate to the one in the town, is probably the correct figure. I don't know because this is what she handed me today as the version that we we can working on them, mm -hmm. so I, I really, I don't know where that came from, so I will have to check with her, okay. and we'll clarify the discrepancy. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Assistant Library. Last year's budget was 69.12. This year it's 9,126. How come? Um, we have, uh, Currently employ some very highly qualified staff. Um, one of our librarians is also a librarian at the Rochester Public Library and is getting her MLS in library science. 
um, one of the other people uh, that's newer, who I think is not the one that got the increase. Um, it's also got a ton of experience, and I think it has to do with who we are. It's 32% increase. And they have, it may have to do with the hours. That's what was going to be my question, yeah. because there's a position that grows from 5,600 to zero. Yeah. And so I'm wondering, did you shift, because the library uh, assistant and then the assistant librarian each got an increase. Um, and I'm looking at, it's hard to keep the lines straight, but the, set, the assistant librarian one and assistant librarian two, one goes to zero and the other increases. And it looks as if you've taken a position and given people current existing staff more hours. But we also we also shifted it around a little bit so that we could accommodate some subs because we have had issues with one, you know, right now at the library only one person is ever working at any given time. Right. And there was potentially nobody to sub and we would have to close. So the decision was made this year that we would put some money in a line. And that may have been part of how Sarah was moving that money around. I have to total that up and see what it is. I don't think it's. I, think, I don't think it's a 32 percent increase over what we were paying the well, staff before. I think not, we moved the numbers around. Not in staff uh, aggregate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a, That's it's what I'm saying. It's a two thousand. It's a two thousand dollar yeah. increase in the aggregate. No, you've got two all. over there. The assistant all. library, one at 48, one at 56, and that comes up to 10,416. And your budget in this year, the nine five five five. Those Charlie, two positions. Charlie, I'm just if, talking if about. If you look at the aggregate for the entire salaries for the library, there's only a two thousand dollar increase. Yeah. So it's across. And that's including the two percent increase for yes. the direct. Yeah. And one position got zero down. Right. There's one position yeah. there that that's got what, zero that's, yeah. that's what I was trying to understand, Howard, because I just got this. So in terms of of raises, people are getting the two percent raise. Or yeah. Are there people that are? Is there an adjustment okay. that's being made? Yeah, and nobody, I don't think anybody's gotten higher than a 2% raise ever, unless the town was doing, there have been a year or two where the town gave high, like a 3%, and then the director would get that. But the people that are working for us are paid woefully below what they are paid in their other jobs. And I, I think that the way we did this was to kind of try to accommodate some, some staffing issues and having people that have a little bit more education. So, yeah. That's probably the one that got zeroed out is even now. Do you only plan on 2785 for revenue? The bottom. Just it's the same as 2019 revenue. I think they just took the same number this year as that's what yeah, for people who look at that line um, and, and are not familiar with the history of the library, um, when the library was formed in 2008, um, we fund fundraised for the entire operating budget for the first year. The second year, the town kicked in a small amount of money, and then for three years, they kicked in about two-thirds of the operating budget. So money that was donated in those days often came from grants or people that were supporting in a different way for a different purpose than they are now. We've, we've sort of stabilized what we are able to earn with fundraising and donations at this point. And um, we did actually spend a huge amount of donated money. We, got spent, we spent three years raising to do the renovations. There's no cost on it for that. We recovered it, repainted it, and we financed the library this year all on donated money. So um, I would say that number, 2,700, 2,800, is probably about where we be with, with the way that we fundraise now. So those big numbers are when we were trying to get established. On, well, I think we qualified for more, the library qualified for more because it had less support from the town, right? And so well, we were able to, you know, it's a different kind of sell when you're right. trying to operate and have people support that versus having the operating budget and now it's for additional, you know, things that we want to provide to the community. It's, different. it's kind of a different game that we were trying to get the money from the actual operating costs. I have a question. Not budget specifically, but it's kind of like support of it. Does the library do anything as far as metrics 
uh, how many, you know, over the course of years, how many books have been loaned? Yep, every many month. So you have every month the trustees receive a director's report, and we compare year over year usage. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we have about you know seven or eight different categories that we're measuring. Okay. We have records of that all the way back to the library company. Um, software allows us to keep track of how many people have access cards. Um, there are over 2,000 people that have library cards in the library. But like meetings and number yep. of people, so, so really to, to so demonstrate the, the effectiveness of the If you wanted to go down and ask to look, you, the book is behind the counter and you're welcome to go in and look at it any time that you want. And I think it goes all the way back to 08. I mean, they may all be in the same binder. Yeah, I, I was more, into, you know, I think it's more of a making people aware that it exists yep. helps justify the town's expenses yep. on it, so yep. it becomes relatively Yeah, month, month to month we have between, <clears throat> um, you know, 10 and, and a dozen groups that use the library for their meetings. Mm -hmm. You were there last night, you heard right. the Boy Scouts, yeah. Yeah. And we're next yeah. door, I and mean, we have, you know, civic groups that come in, we have local businesses that use the meeting, the condo associations for all of the condos on 2nd Street, we actually use the library for their meetings. Um, we had a group come in and do a senior citizen's driving course uh, this fall. Um, there's a senior citizen social hour now, uh, one day a week. All the grade school kids that are below second grade walked down this morning, and they walked to the school and come and have a story time. Kindergartners in our town actually get their first library card in kindergarten when they walk down to the, that's when you're, that's when you're initiated, is you walk down with the teacher and get your card. Um, and then they leave them at the library for the end of the year they can take it, they can take it with them. So we're pretty integrated with a lot of the different groups and businesses in the community. But you, you are welcome to go and look at that information anytime you want, for sure. Uh, haven't you, this is part of the library's annual report that yeah, shows up, so we would well, expect fun. to see yeah. it, it could okay. be there again. It's always right? in the yeah. Yeah. And we always do year to year, you know, year to year. I'm just, it's all there if you want to look at all of it. Okay, I got up. But you did some upgrade in this summer, right? Mm -hmm. And but then you had water damage. How much of that was damaged? Well, you'll be happy to know that because I am in charge, uh, Mr. Bellman <laughs> begrudgingly agreed to pay for all of it. <laughs> um, this is the third time that the sewer system in the building has drained into the water. It's the sewer system. Yeah. So mm. because we're on the bottom, and you know how gravity works and water. Um, the first time it happened, it was over our bank of computers, and we had to have Surfer come in and clean it up. And luckily, at the time, we had a we had a guy out of Barrington that was actually donating Apple computers to us. He ran a private business, and he would take computers out of businesses when they were upgrading, and he would come down and kind of replace for us. And we, we kind of lucked out that time. Um, the last time it happened, it was a fairly minor, but this was two weeks after we laid the carpet. Mm -hmm. And it came down between the main library and the community meeting room that is behind us, which is technically actually the Mills community room. We manage it for the building, but it belongs to Brian. Um, so I think the, I don't know what the surf pro bill was, but he was going to have his maintenance man come in with a shop back, and I said, uh-uh, I want surf pro there cleaning up the class three toxic sewer water. Mm -hmm. And they came and were there for a day and a half. And then... Um, the carpet guy had literally just finished two weeks before, so we convinced Brian to have him come back in and replace all the carpet that had been removed. So, open studio is Saturday, the carpet guy's coming Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and we did invite all of the um, uh, commercial people, you know, businesses that had donated for <coughs> the renovations for an event on Saturday, and it would have really been. You know, kind of in poor form to have, you know, tarps down over the sticky concrete floor where the carpet was missing. So we're, like, really happy that we were able to get the carpet back in. So it should be all completed. But we did furniture, carpet, and had the space painted over the summer. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's really nice. For anyone who's lived through the, the donated items from the beginning, it's, it's, get, it's, all, it's all pretty classy now. So, yeah. Yeah. And Brian paid up for all that. He, he, he That's good. As you know, as he should. Mm -hmm. yeah. I did have a conversation with him about it, and he said this is going to happen again. So my deal with him to get him to like do the carpet immediately was um, I'm going to speak to some of the plumbers in town and see if they will at least come in and look for me, you know, kind of as a volunteer contribution. 
what we might be able to do on our side to mitigate when it happens. I mean, I don't know, like, you know, plastic bins screw it to the ceiling or something. I mean, I, I'm really kind of that desperate at this point because I don't think they're going to correct the plumbing issues. And it's a big building, and there's, I think, nine toilets that feed into that pipe. And the mills open on the weekends, and sometimes teenagers or kids get in there and flush things down. You know, they vandalize the building a little bit. And I think that's been part of the issue. At least that's what he says. I don't know. It could be anything, but there's not a lot we can do about it because we can't be there controlling all nine toilets at all times, you know? <laughs> so. so if anyone knows of a way to, like, you know, capture the toxic waste before it hits the floor. <laughs>
a total of 109 kids in our camp. Um, we had two camps going this, this summer. One was Camp Rally for K through, uh, yeah, first, sorry, you had to be entering the first grade, first through, um, you could be 12. So um, we had a, a lap over there. But we also had a teen camp that had 18 kids. Um, we had a total, um, in Camp Raleigh was 91 kids, where we had 54 residents and 37 non-residents. And in our teen camp, we had 10 Rollinsford kids and 8 non-Rollinsford um, kids. So um, our budget for next summer is essentially, it's roughly the same. I believe we went down a couple hundred dollars on the Camp Raleigh. We had a 48786. And we're going to 48, 4, 60. Um, and then we have a total of the 63, 5, 7, 7. But we have a, we have a major change that um, we're excited about. I, I believe the select board is excited about. Um, we would like to take the, the money appropriated for team camp. So we... We kind of made the decision not to run teen camp for next summer. Um, instead, we would like to use that money to fund a recreation director for the town of Rollinsford. Part-time. Part-time recreation director. Well, yeah, with the limited funds, which I believe our, our budget for teen was 12-7, roughly 12-7. So, um, you know, we've, we've talked about what... Our, our group of volunteers is, is running three programs pretty much over the course of the year. Camp, the summer camp being obviously our major time commitment and um, expense. Um, we are now running um, winter basketball right now. So we have open gyms for the month of November, two days a week, and that's for third graders through sixth graders. And then we take those kids and decide if we're running um, how many teams we can put together for what they call a quote-unquote travel team. Um, and then we have also just um, started senior programming, which we hope to, to really make an impact. We have coffee tomorrow, if anybody's interested, 10 o'clock, um, down at the library. And um, what we're hoping that this recreation director position will do is, is filter filter a lot of the organization and programming towards one person who is now a town employee. Um, you know, it gets a little sketchy with our group of volunteers that who's answering what, what questions or that Caroline gets to filter all of our all of our stuff as well. So we're really hoping with this rec director that it will um, it will take over, you know, being in charge of the programming and increase programming for the people in this town and for the community. Um, right now, we, we, we're still in the process of figuring out uh, where this person will fall. And what we're thinking is that they will be part-time through the year and then run our summer camp. So if that's the case, we have funding in Camp Raleigh budget that will cover their salary. So the 12-7 may or may not even um, be needed in, in as much as that. You say 12-7, what, what is that? What is that? That's it's the, yeah, that's the, um, it's the team camp appropriation for 2020. That was our expenditure. I don't know what it was. I don't know what it was. 13 was roughly 13. I know that. Um, yeah. It's 13, number. 13, 15 was yes. what we projected as revenue for 2020. Right. Okay. This is the what we're spending. Appropriation. I have 13, 5. This is what we said oh, okay. we were going to spend. That's the money we're putting out. This is the money. Okay. There. It's <laughs> roughly $13,000. So I can clarify that a little bit. Because yes. the idea is to take whatever teen had. <coughs> would fund a rec director beyond what Camp Raleigh is. So what she's saying is correct. We would like to have the same person be Camp Raleigh's director as well as the team director. But the team would be January through December and doing activities hopefully throughout the year 
as well as doing Camp Raleigh. Um, there is, at this point though, Team Camp taking the the, uh, the money proposed for Team Camp used to have an income. Right. This will not have an income, so this would be a tax revenue, not a tax impact because they will not be the revenue generated from the people who are going to Team Camp. Right. So, so the, yes, just to keep yeah. that in mind. So this is a is a request of the town to, you awesome. know put some money towards recreation and um, and and I hope that we see a value in that um, and certainly as our aging or as our population ages we, we need more <coughs> activities for you know that age group um, I've also we've also like to use that kind of as a hopefully and I know school board is here um, to make the building, the school building, more available for all these other um, events and I think, or programming, and, and I think having a town employee be in charge of that, I think will make things a lot easier for the school to open their doors as opposed to one of, um, you know, a volunteer running the program. So I'm really hoping that having that employee will, will be that kind of, um, bridge to, to, you know, bridge the gap between our school building, which really needs to be used more. It really does. Um, and it used to, needs to be used more by our townspeople because they all pay into that building. So, um, you know, that's kind of our hope is that as the rec director will be offering more programming, but then being able to ut utilize the building more for town um, programs. So that's kind of our new exciting um, twist to your budget in front of you. Um, so I don't know, are there questions? Suzanne. <laughs> Suzanne's got a question. Yes, thank you. So just to get this straight, um, what you're considering doing is hiring a part-time recreation director. Correct. Right. right? I, 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 it's, okay. Yes. If that would work. You know, maybe full time and for a portion of the summer or close to, and part time the rest. Right. So I was concerned with the salary because it, it it just doesn't seem. You know, I know that we don't have a lot of money, but you know, it's a complaint that we hire. You know, under, you know, we're paying people in the market all the time. But then I, if I heard correctly, that thirteen thousand is will be supplemented by the salary that's in here under Camp Raleigh. Is that? Yeah. So we're giving it about um, eighteen thousand. <laughs> will, will that be competitive? I mean, do you do you it's know? It's part time. It's part time. It's part time. I understand, but twenty hours a week. We talked to Elliot, um, and they recommend hiring somebody at twenty to twenty five dollars an hour. We talked to them in February, um, and at twenty dollars an hour for five hours a week <coughs> for. Um, 52 weeks, we're talking less than $10,000. Right, but it becomes full time in this. And that's covered by the tuition. And that will be covered oh, by the $5,000 salary line it. in Camp Raleigh. So this 13000 could easily cover, I mean, I, I think we figured out at one point it would be six um, hours a week. Did we, did we do something with that? It was $6,000 yeah. for the year. So. Yeah. Um, based on like four or five hours a week times 52 weeks a year. And that includes the summer, them working above and beyond whatever that um, camp salary would be that they would be getting for the summer working for time. The logistics is really, we're still working on sure. it because the, the yeah. select board has to uh, figure out because it is part of that um, part that's coming from the team is going to be a tax impact. As that the other one is hopefully revenue done, you know. And if anything from that goes over, then it can apply to that. But at this point, we're saying that would be a budget item sure. that would have to be supported by taxes. And but one possible one possibility is that if, if you have a recreation director, even though that person is not a full time person, nonetheless, you've got somebody who's really the job is to think about things like that. So yes. it's also possible that the person could could come up with some ideas to generate. More revenue, absolutely, right? Absolutely. So, yeah. Well, and I can just tell you this: I talked to Heather. Um, she's the Elliot person. Pickleball, pickleball is the mm -hmm. sport of the future right mm -hmm. now. 
She she said that they have their gym on Sundays is nonstop pickleball um, with adults and um, that they you know they have a program they set a fee and there's games all day long on Sundays so mm -hmm. you know it definitely is a possibility and I'd love to see that going on in our gym on the weekends mm -hmm. you know it needs to be not empty and if you look <laughs> under the senior line um, as a committee we did talk about possibly doing a fee collection that would go towards like something just generated for the seniors, like a meal or something like that. But we haven't figured out logistically how to handle that in the budget. So a rec director can help us facilitate the collection of fees for the senior programs, like $3 for a senior meal or $5 for a senior meal, um, and help cover the costs to um, perpetuate the program. So then the STEM structure would be a rec director, a camp brawling director, and an assistant director. Maybe. But we're looking for a camp <laughs> brawling director and the rec director to be the same person. Yeah. That's what I was yeah. For the might, time being. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that might be the same person. It makes some sense early on. Yeah. But if pickle, pickleball gets yeah. added and there's some successes with growing the program, then there may be reason to add staff then. Right. So for and the budget, you know, it would be good to have one person for that just to get off our feet here. Other communities who have been successful with a rent director in the past have somebody who oversees, not necessarily directly hands on, but they're there for backup for any of the programs, sure. summer programs. One of the towns that does that is North Berwick, um, Maine. They have somebody who does all takes in all the paperwork, which Currently, the town is doing, and it would take the rec director would take a lot of burden off of the town administrator, and then they are just there to answer questions and to help out and to run the logistics during the summer. Where right now we're combining the two positions. And pardon my ignorance on this question; I should probably know it, but I don't. What are the hours? You know, how many hours a week that is Camp Rally in session? I'm assuming Monday through Friday. So it's Monday through Friday. It's eight weeks. Um, it, it runs nine to four are the are the bulk, um, but you can also pay extra for pre camp, which is seven thirty to nine, and we also have a post camp, which is four to five thirty. That's fantastic. Yeah, and that's been a big. That's actually generated um, a pretty good income for us, the pre and the post. So we, we charge extra for that. We nearly tripled what we expected this year with the pre and post camp. Yeah. Our free child care. Mm -hmm. And. Um, the teen camp had a slightly different schedule when it was running. It was only three days a week, and it um, ran the same, same hours, hours. Yeah. but oh. three days a week to give the teens an opportunity to go out and do more different things. They were never on site. They were always on the trip. Oh, that's right. And we love teen camp, but I do want to say we, we would love to see them <laughs> come back. You know, I think it's a great opportunity for our kids who are too young to work and don't have things to do besides be on their cell phones. Um, we would love to see that come back, you know, after hopefully we get all this, you know, up and running that, you know, we don't want to say that that's gone forever, but uh, at some point in time we'd like to bring it back. Two. <laughs> <laughs> question, but first, I mean, I just want to thank both of you and all of your, the rest of your committee. I know the amount of work that, you know, you as just, as town residents are putting in to to have resurrected this program and to keep it going, and, and it's a lot of work, so thank you both for that. This is a, a sort of a nitpicky thing on the um, senior program budget, on the anticipated revenue. Your, uh, you've got the town allotment there as anticipated revenue, so that's not customarily how we do The anticipated revenue should be the revenue that you anticipate coming into the town. Not that the town is, is giving and support that. That's going to show up in the expense thing. So that should, that line should just go to zero. Um, there was no anticipated revenue right now coming in from the senior program. Okay. So just a bottom line in zero is all it should say. Or 500 to no, 10. No, no, no. It, you, you're not anticipating at this, at, right now any anticipated revenue. So it should be zero. Okay. And it should be zero all the way along from the prior years because it was the same thing. What you're showing here is really the expense appropriation that is part of the expense budget. So that was just 
just my small little piggy thing. Thank you. Just for informational purposes, how many teens participated this last year? 18. Uh, but they sign up by the week? Yeah. So um, we could have up to 20 per week, and they signed, most of them signed up for multiple weeks. We only had two sign up for one week. Yeah, so it was a little different, so it was a little different setup just because you could do weekly, well, you could do weekly with Raleigh, but uh, with the younger camp, but most, most people there sign up for a whole summer, pretty much. But, so, so we had as much as 12, I think this summer we had 12 was our highest, and I think 7 or was our lowest week. So, well, the team. Yeah. Yeah, and they do all sorts of things, um, going from amusement parks to laying on this bath, um, hiking, and... Hiked Mount Major. Hiked Mount Major, went to the seacoast beaches at the ocean, um, did... Um, Take flight, a climbing course in Kittery. Um, indoor sand, indoor water parks, they went down to... Um, Coco Key. Coco Key in Massachusetts. They do all the local fun centers like Hilltop and... Um, and what they did, or what we did when we figured out the team budget, was um, we broke it down so the max activity for the week would be $50. So if they went to Coco Key, it was the, um, they, we would put $50 towards that ticket, and then they would go hiking at a state park with Diana's Bath on one day. And then the Friday, would, they would do an activity in the morning and go swimming and you'd pay $110, so for a resident, $125 for a resident. And, um, so roughly half of it would go to your big trip for the week. Transportation costs is what's tough on that. Because you have 12 kids on a bus and it's, you know, $250, $250 to $300 a day for a bus. So it's, that's, that's the toughest thing for the expense. And we won't have anything for it this summer. No. Not right now. How'd you do on revenue neutral yes, this year? You're about four grand short, Charlie. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, yeah thirty nine hundred. We had um we had a little, few less campers. Um and I talked to Summersworth about that. They had less campers this summer too, so I'm not sure um I'm not <coughs> sure if there's a rhyme or reason to that, but we had about ten less kids this this summer in Camp Raleigh. And then um and then we were a little over on our counselor um, counselor fees. I think that's where where that showed up. No, I know you're going up on your rates. Is that going to make you more closer to revenue neutral? We hope so. We, we've been trying, <laughs> yeah. Charlie. For four, I'm you know, well three, aware of what you've been doing. Three summers. I'm not criticizing that. I know. <laughs> What's the trend line? <laughs> <laughs> What's your trend line in terms of closing the gap on that revenue neutral? Well, this summer was a little bit bigger, actually. We kind of went the wrong way this summer. Um, <coughs> our first summer was probably 2,000. We went between two and four all three years. Actually, was it the, yeah, about two, two and four. Just, just for general information, before the rec committee, this particular instance of the rec committee took over, the town is subsidizing uh, recreation to the tune of over 20000 a year. So it's a, big it's a big, really big improvement. And it, what hap what, what, the back story that, that didn't come up, and I might as well make it more obvious now, is that there was a, people who had been on the rec committee at the time just retired from it. You know, the rec director retired from it. And there was this real void, and we were... There were a lot of new people who ran the rec program this one year, and we were very concerned about some issues with safety, with uh, oversight, and all those kinds of things. And so we did not feel comfortable continuing the program. And so we did not, and for safety reasons. And again, there was just turnover in personnel. And, and Kelly <laughs> came to us and says, how can you do this to us? <laughs> and, and, and what you're seeing now, is, so our challenge to them is we're happy to reinstate it. You have to get this thing revenue neutral because at that point, it was late in the budget season. We had already, that money was already somewhere else. And so they did, they have done an outstanding job in, in trying to make themselves be revenue neutral. And again, it, 
the budget before that that the town was fully supporting was over twenty thousand. So you're still you're still to the good, even with the even with that thirteen thousand dollars salary. So, yeah. so that sixteen thousand less spending sixteen thousand less on that budget. They they, they were spending around twenty thousand in the past and four thousand now. Well, they toward revenue neutrality. Yeah, they, well, there was no attempt to be revenue neutral, and so we were just covering everything. There was incidental revenue that came in, selling hot dogs or something. But it was pretty incidental, you know. Yeah. So, anyway. But basically, when we were putting twenty thousand in, it was mostly to just Rollins for students. Right. Now it's a lot of out of towners. Well, it was only nine to three, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, and, and people we went home for lunch. So now to defend you, yeah. you're doing a hell of a good job. Yeah. But see, the problem is they're putting a budget now, and they don't even know if they've got a kid next this summer. Sure, you have a question? Yeah, just so you mentioned um, the teen stuff. You have a different rate for out of town, which I think is great. Is that true also for the yeah. kids? Of yeah. So we charge more. <laughs> um, so there's um. What for, for Rollins for instance, Rollins for um, camper for and we're really we're really low. I mean compared to any other towns for what we offer. Um, we're charging one Rollins for person three hundred and fifty dollars for the summer. Eight that's all eight weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, out of town is four seventy. So it's a it's a hundred and twenty dollar difference. And we you know, we we do need to have a discussion where about about rates and um, out of town rates and things like that. So we are going we are going to go up a little bit. We're hoping, you know, I we don't want to we don't want to price people out, you know, in Rollinsford. It's, it's pretty important. Well, but, definitely on the Rollinsford side. Yeah. But I mean, the, but we can definitely like, go up in the yeah. out of town, which it's I think is like what a, we're going to do. But yeah. we had a, you know, <coughs> we had a pretty good revenue from out of towners. So, you know, it's kind of hard. Yeah. <laughs> so, um. Our numbers, we had 65 roughly Rollinsford campers and 45 out-of-town campers, but our out-of-town campers pay the bulk of the before and after care um, fees, which are additional mm -hmm. fees into our pockets because yeah. their parents can't get here as quickly as the Rollinsford residents. So that adds a bonus to us and like on a weekly basis, if you, like I do mine on a weekly basis, my children, because we're gone to different places all throughout the summer. So it's 50 to $70 for a Rollinsford resident, $70 for all five days, $50 for the week of the 4th of July, and then it's $20 more per week, per week yes. for an out-of-town resident. 90. We, so you can you can choose which way to pay too. You can choose weeks also, or do a full summer. And we had um, probably 20 to 30 families due by the week, and some of them didn't realize that you pay for all eight weeks. You're paying for five weeks basically, and you get the other three free. So they're paying for six, seven weeks at the weekly rate and giving us more money. Any other questions for Brett? Yeah, it's only a small thing, but first aid and CPR and background. There's 300 in it this year for both of them. You didn't spend it and you're putting it back in. We had a number of our counselors who are already certified, so they did not have to go through that training. Yeah. yeah. So we did have a lot of um, yeah. um, record checks. Where is that showing? Executive. Oh, it's on our budget. Yeah, we and had a lot. Oh yeah. Okay. Anybody over? Is it over eighteen? We have to do it. Yeah, eighteen and over. The other thing was is that we, since we, we were not um, as close as we've been in the past, the last couple of years, um, when we did the budget, we just tried to keep it as close to pop as last year's, so that then we could hopefully find our mistakes, correct them, and move forward to become more new. Questions. Good job. All right, thanks very much, guys. Thank you. Pickleball. Yeah. Pickleball. 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 Pickle
I don't know if it's right to Ben. Yeah, oh my god. Kelly, just Kelly. Well, I'm sorry. This may be a question for, for, I don't know, but so the section is called Parks and Recreation. But you've talked about our three lines of that, Summer Day Camp, Summer Teen Camp, which will be the director, and Senior Programs. But there is Salmon Falls Family Fun Day and Winter Rec. It's on the next yeah. Winter Rec Basketball. Yeah, Winter Rec is really part of the program, but they're not changing it. It's, it's still just the basketball program that they are doing every year. And, the and Salmon, Salmon Falls Family Fun Day is myself, yeah. and we're still representing fireworks. fireworks. Okay. That's correct. Right, thank you. Thank you. So I want to make sure that Caroline will be able to speak tonight. Yes. I, I don't think we need a motion. For I don't. I think we should just cross the board every year to allow it. So. Um. Um, just a couple of housekeeping measures. You have um, a new copy of the operating budget. It has expenses through the end of October. The previous version was only through September. So that gives you a little bit more information um, when you deliberate. Also, the revenue report that you have when we get to that um, does not have... Um, please ignore the capital uh, um, items section because the board has not decided on capital items. Um, and also, um, back to the operating budget, the, the select board did vote on the, on the default budget, which is um, their discretionary budget. And it, you know, by all means, if you have questions that you want to raise for Denise or myself about the default budget now or at another meeting, that's fine. But it's not um, subject to change by the budget committee the way the operating budget is. So if you have any questions about that, I'm happy to answer Just questions about that. Well, keeping one, so do I not have the right, if mine says year to date through 9.30, I don't have the correct. Right, you want to have a new, you want a new version. There is a newer version. <coughs> Which has another. It also um, says 9.30. I mean, I printed this out today. That's why yeah. I'm, well, no, it says year to date expenditures, and the year to date is through 9.30. Oh, did you not change your header? No. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, is there is there yeah, thing we can use to kind of just tie it just to make sure that we're um, looking at yes, that? I will. I will. Oh, look at that! I'm looking at nine thirty two. Let me look at. Yeah, it doesn't. I mean, okay, so um, that's fine. I'll go back and see. You know, stand by on that. Um, the short answer is I know that those figures exist through um, the end of October, but the report I have in front of me also says nine thirty. Yeah. So I don't have anything to tie you into right now. But I will go back and look through that email and. Make sure I get you a rebox. Stay tuned to your email. I'll get you October. So, so this is likely not through 10:30. It is likely not because that, the, the header was changed when it was changed. I got you. But it's yeah, just and like I don't think it has because when yes, I look at do. the total, it's basically it's the pretty same. much the same. Yeah, exactly. The fall budget has changed All right. a little. Well, so is the proposed 2020 proposed was correct, right? Yeah. Our proposals. We didn't do any changing on correct. That, the bottom line yeah. of the 2020 proposed okay. is correct. So okay. I apologize for that, you know, setting false expectations there. But I will follow through and get you better numbers. Okay, so um, we're going to kind of bounce off of each other. But um, bottom line is, um, well, some of the stuff you've heard already from the town clerk and from the police department and the fire department, <laughs> we're really going to talk about our portion of it, but some of it is contained within that, like executive contains some of that. So um, where the moderator and the check, uh, supervisor of the checklist, you know that the increases are due to the additional um, elections. Um, and then um, the telephone line um, is increasing and we're asking for an additional cell phone for welfare use because we don't, lots of times people are trying to call and we don't believe that we should have our employees give out their cell phone number for residents to call looking for them. So we're asking for, it, we're, we're talking about a track phone, right? It's a track, track phone. phone. And just for the use for the welfare department uh, and have it on there if someone needs to give a follow back up to us. So well, that would be in Caroline's. 
But also, we're actually required, according to RSA 165, that governs welfare to be available between regular business hours that approximate 8 to 4.30 or 9 to 5 or something like that, when we would be consistently available to the town, um, to the residents or people who might have a public assistance need. And so um, this track phone would be a way to accommodate that without having the doors open to the public, which is a security risk, or if you know there's a meeting going on or if I'm on vacation or something like that. It's just a way to um, have the availability we're supposed to have without changing town hall hours. Um, and then um, and the contingency, we it's 1% over the prior operating budget. So that's where we are on the um, executive total. Is there any questions? There's a couple questions, yeah. Um, I'm sorry? Emily? Yeah, uh, did you guys look into it all? I know there are services that forward, so if you have a phone number, it can, it'll forward to whatever cell phone you want to put it out to, and it does not show the real phone that it's going to. And can you call back on your personal cell phone and it doesn't show your I cell phone number? I think so, but I'm not 100% sure on that part. Worth looking into. I think Thank there you. are free services. Just. Yeah, we just want to make sure that yeah. the replying back would not give any indication. We're that's also true. talking about a burner phone that's going to yeah. cost about, what, a budget of $200. Right, a it's, well, you know, yeah. a year totally plan, small. And, you know, but yeah. it's a really small dollar. But you also have to keep track of a second phone. Yeah. <laughs> right, and that is something. <laughs> it's going to be the same thing. Having had a husband in that position before, I know how that can go. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. uh, Suzanne, yes, I'm, I'm hoping that either Carolyn or Denise can orient me to the to the narrative, which okay. I appreciated receiving, and, and this, it, it, are, are these the same? Do you, do you mind if I back go up ahead, please, and, and do that? I, I have copies, should any of you have not printed copies. Um, this is what I gave to the select board, and like the other department heads, they took that into consideration and made their own decisions. So it doesn't reflect exactly what's in this select board approved budget because they've gone for their deliberations. Um, and if I could have one copy of that back, thank you, <laughs> because I gave it away, but one could come back and give it to Emily. Would, would we be able to identify the things that... Yes. Oh, yes. yes, I'm going to help you You're make welcome. this really logical and right. black and white for you. Perfect. Um, so this is a lot of verbiage that basically is an ass my assessment of the needs with regard to town administration, land use, and welfare as I see them. But I did what um, the best I could to project out um, a multi-year plan or a big picture assessment um, while at the same time providing where I thought we should start for year one and then continue with year two and year three. And I'll continue to do this every year, but in this narrative, um, I talk about um, strategic governance, which is this concept, but but to a greater degree, <laughs> data-based approach in um, <clears throat> sort of tackling a problem and, and outcomes and outputs and how do you address multi-year plans um, throughout departments um, to come um, so, so that departments can better assess, you know, if you have a speed problem, then, then what is the solution to that, and what does that cost, and when does it happen, and that these department-level multi-year plans can filter to the select board that can then do their own strategic planning session based on the multi-year plans of the department heads. And so um, I'm working on that concept with them, but one of the things that I've mentioned in this narrative is the concept of strategic governance. It is on the second page. Um, there is a website there for a company that does it. Um, I, I'm hopeful that the Select Board and Budget Committee will one day host a meeting of this company to explain the benefits. Um, this company comes in and trains all the department heads and the Select Board and myself about how to carry this out. And of course, there's a cost to that. Um, but it has really helped communities who have been stuck in default budgets for a number of years. And of course, we would hope to avoid that rather than be that. Um, but it's just making better decisions, um, better database decisions. So, so that's one of the broad level um, principles that I'm suggesting for the town, but I also tried to implement in this proposal. Um, so one of the other bigger, t so that is not reflected in this 2020 proposal at all. Um, so we can leave that alone for now. But um, so the other higher level expensive um, assessment in this proposal is on the first page, and that's the idea of digitization, um, which is that we are 
we, we have a, a we have a multifaceted problem, which is that we're running out of space. Um, information is in paper form, which is a mess and hard to access, and paper costs money to print and file and manage and find. And so digitization is a way to provide better information to the public, but also um, for us to be able to make better decisions based on information we know we have but can't find. So um, there are links there to um, proposals. Um, this is another thing that I would hope um, the Select Board and Budget Committee can have a host meeting to um, to you know, invite RICO to explain the proposal and the benefits and they have the data so that um, we can understand the benefit better rather than just looking at the numbers and freaking out because that is for sure the first thing that happens. Um, and that will be broken down over years by function. So, is there anything in this current year's budget? So there's nothing in 2020 about this. I'm just bringing it to everybody's attention because it's important, it's going to be expensive, it will be incremental, but it's not this year. So aside from that, my um, my basic assessment, um, are, you know, I'm, I'm pointing out that we don't have a, facility, a facilities director, which is um, proving to be more problematic with not just this building, but other buildings that we don't have proper maintenance schedules. We don't know um, exactly what's going on with the buildings and know what they need for repairs and when they need those repairs. We don't have employees who are trained to know those things. So with that being said, that's, that's, um, there's one last thing in the general assessment, and that is the master plan, which is also not budgeted for 2020, but an important topic to be aware of, which is that our master plan is out of date. It's an important land use document, which, also, which ties into most boards and committees in the town. Um, everybody and every body, um, when they make decisions, should be making decisions with consideration to the master plan. And the master plan is um, something that's developed through a very um, interactive process, engaging with the public to find out um, what, what do you want to see Rollinsford be in 10 years? Do you want it to look the same? Should we change to have more industrial uses? Should we cater more to senior houses, housing because we have a, you know elevated senior population or, or whatever the case may be, but how do we reflect the goals and values of the residents in this document that all the boards and committees will then consider when they make decisions. So we're required to have this document by law in a minimal way. Um, we can certainly have extra chapters, but, but there's a minimal standard that we have to meet. So, um, so that's just something to be aware of, but it's not for 2020. So with that said, we can go to page three. The bottom of page three is 2020. Those are, um, I don't want to skip the big picture because it's easy to not want to read lots of boring text. So of all that, um, some of these things have already be, been accomplished. I'm going to start with the bullet points. The property assessment cards, um, that was a really important request I've been making of the board for a number of years. And the board, um, three years ago, two or three years ago, tried to accommodate that through um, MapGeo, which is a wonderful interactive program that provides assessing data online. But it does not provide um, the complete level of data that the people who are looking for that data are looking for. So um, not to say that it's completely useless, because it's really interesting, and it's still out there. Um, but we have stopped subscribing to it because the purpose of it was to reduce foot traffic in my office for appraisals, uh, appraisers and real estate agents um, and insurance adjusters who wanted property assessment cards because um, there was a lot of volume of that and it was a constant interruption. And then of course, you know, there's the carbon footprint for people who would come often from far away to get that information or else, record, you know, ask that we um, email it or something, which is just time intensive. So the board graciously provided that this year. So um, I'm asking that that be continued to be offered in the budget. But now we have switched to Avatar, which is our assessing firm. Our full actual assessment cards are now available online. Um, and that's been for about a month now. And it's been a tremendous difference in foot traffic and questions about, you know, I'm looking for a property card and I think I see it, but I'm not seeing the data and am I looking at it wrong? And there were a bunch of confusing, you know, consistent confused, confused questions like that. So that is a continued request that is in the IT services line 
in the executive. Um, it's, it's the green line, um, line 17. So that's an annual license That is an annual license fee, yes. Um, so the second bullet point is the bookkeeper position, which is new to this year. Uh, he was hired in June. Um, the position was created for 20 hours a week. Um, it was not really known, and it's still not really known, the, posi the potential for that position. My goal um, with the select board in having that position created was to have that person be the point person for some of the most basic phone calls, which um, include, to a large degree, property questions. Um, questions about, can I do certain things to my property? Um, as much as we can um, afford so, so, so let's back up a minute. So um, when we created this position, we did it at a relatively minimal cost, $16 an hour, which is not horrible, but it's not market rate for that <coughs> position. Um, it was done because the town administrator position was created at the same time. So it was a heavy lift for administrative cost in one year to create both the town administrator position and the bookkeeper position, but also um, with regard to the bookkeeper, without knowing if you've got a good fit and what the qualities of the person actually are after a probationary period, you don't want to necessarily, um, you know, so part of it's budgetary, but, but also you didn't, we didn't know who we were going to get and what the quality of that person is. So now knowing who we have and that he's excellent and he's learned a lot and he continues to learn a lot and he's very interested and dedicated to his job and he also has... Um, really um, black and white ethics, which I really appreciate. It was um, important in my office and I was concerned about that. And so that's where this proposal comes from, in, um, increasing his hours by five per week, but also increasing his rate to 1850, which is a, you know, maybe second quartile um, market rate for that position. So it's a total hours per week. So, so it would move it from 20 to 25 hours a week. What line? So this is, it, it is it's a comp, it's a compiled line, number six, it, um, admin support personnel. Oh. That line is a combination of myself and the bookkeeper position and Salma Perry, who takes minutes for the board and also works um, maybe five, hour, five to six hours a week in my office and works on the newsletter that goes out with the property taxes. Some, she does some other things outside of those few hours, but um, so she's in there and the bookkeeper and myself. Do you have a um, breakdown of that? I can certainly provide it if the body wants to provide it, but I can tell you what it's comprised yeah. of, which is, so, so it's a 2% increase for that board secretary, and it is now, um, the select board settled on $17.70 for the bookkeeper position from what I requested, and also um, f five additional hours for um, okay. his position to 25 yeah. hours. Um, the, um, that line also in, um, includes, we'll jump down to a different bullet point, but um, I have requested a $5,000 um, $5, increase to my salary, which the board has supported in that line. Um, I'm asking for, for that for similar reasons, uh, with the bookkeeper position, that the position was new. Um, when, when a position is new, especially when there are other things going on, it's, it's really too much to um, do it all at once to the level that you would want to do it. And also, um, I, I, the, the job description is, is heavy as it's written now, but we all kind of acknowledged in the beginning that we're not really sure how much of this is realistic. So, um, $5,000 um, I'm asking for because we have adopted, the board has adopted a new um, policy regarding its implementation of policies, and they're getting much more aggressive about that, where in theory every third meeting they are approving a new policy, which requires me to select and revise um, policies to propose to them. And as we review those policies, the goal is to evaluate what my, my role might be with regard to those policies, which is increasing, um, but also to bring it up more to um, market and what I think it should have been to begin with, um, that just wasn't really possible when we were doing so much all at once last year. Um, 
the, the board is also talking about um, that there's kind of a consensus on the board about adding more direct reports to me as well. So, so th that's what that line six is comprised of. Um, okay, now the, is the bookkeeper figured for a year? Or for? Okay, can we just do this in a little more early and ask because there's Emily's also raising her hand. So oh. let's take turns if we can. No problem. I got a problem with that. <laughs> Emily, where are your current record points? Um, I have the bookkeeper, the building janitor, um, I have Tom Clark, who enforcement, I have all the minute takers, okay. and I have the assessing contract and IT. Thank you. Okay, I just wonder what you estimated the bookkeeper for a year. Um, it's in this... Um, That the 1770? Yeah, that, that's your estimate. Yeah, it's in there, 7410. For, it's the second bullet point. Oh, yeah. So that, but to be clear, that's my proposal. That's not what yeah, was yeah. reflected in the line because the board did about how. Yeah, they did seven, 1770, right? For an hourly yeah. wait. Right? Was that based on 24 hours for the whole? 20, Five hours for the year? No, well, no. Oh, 22 and a half hours per week for the year. How many? 12, 22 and a half hours per two, week. Two and a half hours a week increase. Yes. Okay, she so went. So you asked for a five hour increase, but got two and a half hours increase. Yes. Right? Okay. And you okay. asked okay. for 18, 50, 50, 50 increase. 70. 70. That's correct. Okay. So my question is so you're the administrative. Town administrative salaries going from what to what? From 60 to 65. And what's represented in line 6 then, the 89,515, is the 22 and a half hours at 17 something. You're 65. You're 65. And, and a um, minute rate, yeah, 2% for, for the, okay. that other part. Yeah. Okay. Um, we already discussed the burner for the um, the burner phone for the welfare department. That is um, a two hundred dollar value. That is reflected in the budget. Um, then there's this other land use administrator change for two hundred dollars. I, I proposed and the select board agreed to change how we provide um, land use consulting for the planning board um, and the zoning board for that matter. We had someone for many years. Um, serve on the planning board in an advisory, non-voting capacity, and there were things about that that could be improved upon. And so, um, Tom Clark, who is in the office on Mondays in a very part-time basis, um, he is he he sits in the city manager's position on the planning board for Dover and has for a number of years. And um, they receive a lot more volume of cases of all sorts than, than we have. And so his extensive um, planning um, experience that way and through code enforcement. Um, but it, there was also the added benefit of having him in the office so that I could ask him questions and he was more accessible. Um, so I coupled that with a resident in town who um, is a, an AICP certified planner who works for the city of Rochester who is also a Master's of Public Administration. And she is now providing technical reviews um, at home prior to meetings, conferring with Tom Clark, and Tom Clark is serving um, in that advisory capacity at meetings. So I, I believe we're getting um, sort of the double benefit of two eyes on cases. Um, the planning board is challenged <laughs> by being um, kind of always green because we're all just residents and we don't have any professional experience in this and the planning board doesn't see enough cases that we can really gain experience in a way that we feel comfortable like we have our own professional knowledge base. So now we have, I believe, better, um, better support for a difference of $200. So I took the... Um, the for, for those changes that you... Yes. Did. Thank you. So $200 for the year we're talking about. $200 for the year. So I have moved money from the planning consultant line to the to Tom Clark salary line. Um, and, and we are in and the difference is $200 between what they were and what they are. 
and recovered. And we have the added bonus of having Tom Clark now serve on um, the Zoning Board of Appeals in an advisory capacity. So that um, the Zoning Board also being a group of residents with no professional experience and they're fairly new. Um, th these are really technical boards and there's a number of things that are really technical and complicated about any individual case and they're all different and so they got hung up on some procedural things in recent cases but now they'll have a technical advisor who will not necessarily comment about you should or shouldn't do this but here are the procedural aspects this is what you should be considering and should be thinking about and <coughs> zoning doesn't apply or yes zoning really should apply and, and like that so that's what that's about um, so that has already taken place Good question um Caroline, the, uh, the town resident you mentioned who's helping Tom Clark, is that somebody who's being compensated or is that somebody that's just helping out? Uh, no, she is being compensated um, much the same way as the previous person was being compensated. So we've got two people now being compensated for um, a combined total of 200 more than what was happening before. And, and, that, and her role is represented financially or budgetarily in line 67, is that that correct? That the planning consultant. Yes. Planning consultant. So that that's how she that's what she's getting paid. Yes. So I took some of that money and I moved it to you know Tom Clark's salary line. Um, the last bullet point on that page is um, not the last bullet point, but um, the, the select board is still struggling with the town's question about what to do with the police department, which is connected with what to do with this building. And it's really hard to answer that question because we still don't know what the needs of this building might be. Um, so it, it plays into the idea of a facilities director, but also there are some things that you know probably require engineering and, and somebody to tell us to do an asbestos test and, and some things like that. So um, I have tried to get a quote a, for, for an actual assessment of this building. I've been unable to do that, but I've been talking to the school's facility director who um, we kind of mutually agreed that although it's a shot in the dark, um, the school paid $30,000 for their assessment a few years ago. And while that's a bigger building, it was a few years ago, you know, maybe that's sort of kind of a right number. So the select board so far is on board with that idea that there haven't been any official votes on that. Um, on the, on the back page here, we spoke about um, my salary adjustment. The last thing that I have um, added to this budget, which the board has supported, is um, a, something for dental benefits. What is in the budget is not what is in my narrative here. Uh, what is in my narrative would be for the town to offer dental in the same um, cost-sharing structure that the employees currently um, enjoy and when the select board was struggling to keep to make cuts from all the proposals to make this budget equal what they thought would be a reasonable bottom line um, they decided instead to offer it at a 50 50 cost share um, so this has been something that the employees have wanted for a number of years but it still continues to not be happening because um, there is a law that is not, um, there's some kind of insurance statute that is not from our provider. But there's a, there's a bigger rule that says that three quarters of those who are eligible for a benefit, a health care benefit, which includes dental, would have to choose to take the benefit for, for the town to offer it at all. So we have eight full-time employees, six would have to take it, and so far we haven't been able to get six to, to take it. So this proposal is the best proposal that's been offered yet financially for the employee, um, but it's not clear at this point whether or not we have the six people and the board may be trying to restructure this in another way or, or it may die. I'm not really sure what's going to happen with this proposal. We have not had six people respond favorably that they will. Um, we, we have people who are on spousal plans, so we have to compete with whatever they're getting from the spouse. and. We haven't seemed to have hit that yet, or at least I don't know that we have. We're not at a, a point right now.
right now we're going to offer our own comments about things. Sorry, we're just kind of trying to understand. So our deliberation is coming. That's correct. Okay. Um, this is more informational. Um, if there's questions to clarify what we have in front of us or we, fair, we need fair. some yep. additional information, that's that's what today is for. So um, I encourage you all to read the narrative. I went over what I've proposed for this year, but I encourage you to learn more about what's not in this year and what's in the overall big picture. Um, I, I did outline that, you know, congruent with the rest of your previous conversations with department heads, that there are some people that are really underpaid, and, and the minute takers are among them. We've had trouble finding minute takers, and minute takers make $10, $11, $12 an hour for jobs that we know are getting posted elsewhere for $16 to $18 an hour. Um, so I propose that minimally they should reach $14 an hour. Um, our, the, the minute taker who takes care of planning and zoning, that's a particularly technical job and she does more than just take minutes. Um, but because land use is very technical and you're subject um, you have to maintain property rights for the for a developer or for somebody who wants to do something with their land, but at the same time you have to protect the public interest, and that can be contentious, which is um, why the minute taker position is um, extremely important. And she does it well, and she has a lot of knowledge, and she does other things outside of taking minutes, like posting notices and scheduling ZBA meetings and. Um, researching, you know, better forms and more fee structures and such like that. So um, I, I would like to, um, so I'm proposing a different increase for her and title change with her. Um, but um, the mea culpa of all this is that I did not include that in, in this budget. So we'll see how that works out. So that is, I, I think I've pretty much gone over what has, um, what has been taken from the narrative and how it's been interpreted into the budget worksheet. Um, I think you've already been told that there are four elections, so anything related to elections, the moderator and supervisors and such, um, are just a function of how many elections there are. Okay, on the default budget, you leveled it at 60 and 180 on the moderator and supervisor. Shouldn't that be the number of elections? The default budget is calculated by the previous year's budget yes. plus any contractual obligations minus any one-time expenses. It's as vague as that and open to interpretation. Like, what does that really mean? I don't think we can say we have a, con you know, do we have a contractual obligation to, you know, I, I suppose there's a good argument that we do. I would have to take that back to the select board and see what they say about changing the default budget to reflect the number of elections. Well, you did that on uh, uh, line 29, the stipend for the clerk. You moved that one up to the... Yeah. That's a good point. Good catch. Suzanne? I'm just curious. Uh, does the budget committee... What is the budget committee's relationship to the default budget? Do she asked if we had any information on it. Do we, have any, say, do we have any say in the default budget? No. Yeah. But we... But if you found an error, that's certainly welcome to be discussed. Well, we're not, we're not going to we don't approve we're it. We don't. No, 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 you're not approving no, it, but he's just asking a question of why we, yeah. why, why we did what I'm we sure did. I'm sure the select board would welcome the comment. Absolutely. But I think, we're probably, I think he's probably right. I think we're obligated to do that because we have to do it because there is an election, so it's almost and like a contract with them that they have to be there. So I, I, think I would fair. agree that it has to be the same, and we can bring it back up at the next meeting. Yeah. So, well, I'm just looking at voting booth 139. Nothing is included on voting booth, but this will be. Well, no, voting booth is a buying a new, a new voting booth. Oh, so we have that. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So that's not um, a person. Okay, so are we all set on the uh, executive side of it, everyone? Yeah. Okay, so. I, I yep. guess the one question is um, when we talk, and we're going to be talking about salaries, I think, a lot of in the across the board. Do we have information about, sort of backup information about what, what the note taker salaries are typically in, in the area, or what salaries are for town administrators, so that we, we, we have some perspective? Is there, like the chief gave you know, a survey of 
chief salaries to us to give us perspective in, in what he's asking for. Do we have something like that? That would be good to have. The short answer is no, we don't have it. Um, the municipal association used to compile that data and they no longer do because towns don't supply it. So it requires somebody's time in calling all these people and saying, what do you provide and what do you do? So not to say that it's out of the question, but um, no, we don't. The town administrator position, I have a little bit more information. I can tell you that as of a year ago, towns between 15,000 and 3,000 in population had a mean wage of 67.5 approximately. Um, but I don't think there, if there was any, Stratford County was not well represented in that survey. There were a lot of people that didn't respond to that. Um, that's, that's about all I can say about that. Um, I, I pay attention to the job postings. Um, but there's not, I was, I was wondering there, if the Municipal Association had, a, had some kind of a... Uh, they used to have a wonderful book yeah. that they submitted every year with all of it. But again, it's, if, they, if the cities and towns don't reply, I mean, the, yeah. If they don't reply with their dollar amounts, it's kind of useless. And I think maybe that might be one of the reasons why they stopped doing it. But I used to give comparisons to, you know, uh, towns and your size and be able to see what others are making. But um, if people have recommendations, that it's a permission, you know, you're researching it and doing it and coming back with a reasonable um, recommendation because we just don't have the staff not to do it. I think it's called, do you have access to a list sort of for technical administrators? Yes, and someone asked about a year ago about town administrative salaries, which is where that information came from that I just said. That was, you know, nine months or a year ago that somebody asked and then, you know, did the good grace of compiling it all on a spreadsheet and sharing it with everybody. Could you put the question out on the list, sir, about what um, <coughs> takers, you know, in, in a town of this size? I mean, you know, it's got to be relative to. Uh, I don't know what a minute taker is a minute taker. Right? Why, why would you pay less? Well, I'm just, I, you asked about, that, so I'm responding to the question. Yeah. No, I think. Some, I, some um, related information. Just yeah. whatever. But I think I think a minute taker is a minute taker. I mean, it doesn't matter what size your town or city yeah. is. Oh, you're, you're, that's what we're that's saying. Is, is like yeah. they are doing the same job yeah. as the city of Dover is doing. I mean, it it's is. An hourly thing. It's an hourly thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is, are, isn't there information on at the state level, the State Department of Labor, that would give you, you know, general administrative. You know, you, you one could do a common sense comparison. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. about a, a certain job type. Uh, Help. Just think it, help, it helps um, support decision making mm -hmm. for us. Absolutely. Yeah. We're, we're, da we're data deficient, and, and that's one of the reasons why I really want to incrementally work on increasing um, administrative support time because it gives us all better information when we can have time to find data. But there's a lot that we're not doing because we don't have time to do, and, and we can better serve ourselves and, and the public if we can have the time to do things in better detail and, and find corroborating evidence like you're saying. And I'm certainly not asking for extensive amounts of time spent on this. I don't think it's worth the, you know, a, a grid kind of like here's a town comparison, but just to get some idea from like a half dozen people on a list sort of might help. I, I can search job search, the, the job postings too because they're there. Suzanne? Yeah, I'm curious about lines um, 18 and 19, special services and stormwater management. What are the plans uh, for professional services this year? And I guess they don't include stormwater, but stormwater is separate, right? Mm -hmm. so. That's a really good question, and there's not much of an answer for that because the board has been struggling to um, meet and get the budget decided and, you know, do what they have been doing. There, there is a calculator, as you know, to determine what is in that professional services line. Um, it takes care of engineer, primarily engineering services and legal expenses. Um, there is nothing specifically designated that the, that the board has done any kind of strategic planning session to decide it wants to tackle. They've had some anecdotal conversations about concepts. One of them is that we, we know that, well, 
it is likely that we're going to need an engineer to help us determine what is causing sinkholes near the legion, which is relative to a water problem going on behind the legion, which caused Foundry Street to wash out last winter, and probably a pipe from behind the legion to storm drain to storm drain to the river through the ball field will need to get replaced, which is going to need engineering services. So that's one thing that I would anticipate would come out of that line and or the um, Culvert Reserve Fund might be able to help with that. Um, as far as legal expenses are concerned, we're still trying to um, work on our cable franchise agreement, which is in legal review. Our welfare policy has not been through legal review, and other policies may need legal review as well, including parts of um, our insurance companies advised us that um, we ought to have some policies of the recreation department passed <coughs> legal um, before we embark on a new summer with the recreation program. Um, and that in addition to code issues. There, there are a number of um, code violations that we're aware of that are just um, not very easy to budget for. You don't know how um, cooperative people are going to be with bringing their property up to code. Um, so that's a general answer. Uh, I don't, I, I, don't I, just, I guess that, I appreciate that. So the stormwater storm management water. line is, is, we are in year two of our stormwater permit. Um, it's level funded because we don't have, with regard to the stormwater permit, we are required to do a number of things um, that are um, complicated and in flux, and, um, and, and that's frustrating. But basically, although the permit's in black and white, we have a, um, a coalition of um, D DPW um, workers, engineers, and, and um, state-level people from the region of all the um, stormwater communities in the region trying to figure out how do we implement our obligations with regard to the stormwater permit. And, and so we don't know exactly what we're doing is what I'm trying to say. We hope that $5,000 will cover it. It likely will because it did last year, but yet at the same time, we're always, you know, each successive year we're required to do more. So we're required to do public outreach and record metrics about how effective that outreach may or may not have been. Um, also public engagement, which is different, and perhaps even purchasing um, incentives um, for people to engage with us and talk about stormwater. Um, we're required now, at least for this year, to do a second run of street sweeping um, to collect data for how much we're, you know, basically to collect data that justifies not doing it twice a year or forevermore. Um, so, so those are the general things that the stormwater line is for, but we really don't, you know, postage for messaging and um, you know, um, bonuses to incentivize people to engage is the short answer of what that's for. And it sounds like we're still participating in the Seacoast stormwater. Program. Yes. Though, um, if we were to attend some time. Thanks, Paul. Paul Casalt is, um, bless him. he's amazing. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, sure. I haven't said this to the select board, but um, he deserves a stipend. You know, he, he deserves some kind of, you know. He certainly deserves recognition. He, he at least something minimum, because yes. he puts in countless hours, um, month to month, that we don't even see. Because most communities hire companies like mine to do. Yes, he's an engineer, and we're just very lucky that we have an engineer who's retired and has taken this upon himself, and he goes to these meetings where. There are no volunteers. These are full-time municipal employees whose job it is to figure this out. And, you know, here's Rollinsford. Rollinsford's got a volunteer. And um, so I'm attempting to go. I'm struggling to go because um, th there are so many other things going on. Um, so he and I kind of share that. And at the very least, he just deserves to be recognized at every opportunity. Indeed. Thank you. Okay, can we move on? Yes, let's go ahead. All right, so... Um, <laughs> well, we kind of talked about it with the... Um, if, if you guys have any questions on, on the um, elections and registrations and the salaries proposed, and I'll take them, but... No? All right. So just, just a clarification again, so line 29, this is the line that last week we heard town clerk say we should... Uh, 
she, she is recommending it, that it be $500 per election, right? Correct. Thank you. Um, so the financial uh, administration, uh, the tax collector is at 2%. Um, the audit is um, it's approximately a $400 increase. And um, the treasurer is an elected position. Any questions on that? Okay. Town of um, Revaluation. Um, it went up because we didn't get the budget in time, correct, for last year on um, the um, appraisal? Right. So the, we, um, the board just signed a new contract, but last year the budget was flatlined from the year before because they had not yet received the contract. So uh, we're two contracts later as far as this budget number goes. Oh, budgeting, yeah. Any questions for that? Okay. Personnel um, administration, health insurance is reflected um, that we removed some plans that weren't um, <coughs> allocated money that didn't have to go to a plan, and so that's why that reduction is there. <coughs> I'm sorry, can you say that again? Well, we had some projections of what we thought was going to happen last year. They didn't, so we're removing it. We had a number of vacant positions, right. and so we over budgeted <coughs> plans that those new employees might select. We didn't know if they were going to be family. But in fact, in fact, if there are staffing changes throughout the course of the year, that number could scoop right back up. Is that potentially? Potentially. Um, so, so the the premium cost itself went up seven and a half um, percent. So, that's. Um, but basing it on our, what we have now, though. What we're right. So they're based on the actual plans. So that's about um, two to two to four hundred dollars. Per um, per non single employee annually, just you know from from an employee standpoint. So I, I mean I wonder if the board and I'm just saying this I mean I'm not recommending whatever just kind of throwing it out if the board would consider like reserve fund to to sort of fund these um, it could be large swings in both health insurance and also termination pay or. Yeah. You know, with a cap so that, because yeah. uh, otherwise you're kind of building it or not building it into the budget and maybe coming short. But do, do you see what I mean? Isn't that, does the school do that? Yes, they do. Yeah. I mean, that'd be, I think that's something that we should think of. About. You have line 63, though, which is there for that purpose, which may or may not be enough. Mm -hmm. Well, right, but it's, see, it's in the budget every year. Right. So if you were putting, let's say, that amount into a budget, into a reserve fund, but you know you were going to cap it at, let's say, I'm just going to say 10000 well, then if you don't use it that third year, it's no longer in, in, the, budget, in the budget. So it just that is what you were doing as well, right? Typically, not for not for healthcare costs. We do that for special ed costs because they can spend so much. So you don't have one for healthcare? Oh, okay. But I'm aware. You kind of don't. It's just not sounding familiar, but yeah. we may or may not be able to do that. But I, I look into it. Just a yeah, just curious. So, okay, um, that's all on that. Planning and zoning. Um, of course, all of the positions are up to 2%. The reduction on Caroline explained to you on line 67, moving the money to um, Tom Clark's position. And so that's why you're seeing a decrease in that. Okay. Where does Tom Clark appear? I forget. Tom Clark appears. He is down past um, between police and fire, I think. Yes. Oh, I see. Yeah. All right, government buildings. Um. Okay, line 71 advertisement. We overspent last year and you level funded it for this year? Well, this is for planning, not for yes. us. Okay. Um. You, you can never predict what's no. going to come through. So, you know, we got a major subdivision mm -hmm. this year. There's, you know, uh, it's also for zoning too. It, it's been a busy year. Um, you know, the trend before that, we haven't been overexpending. So, you know, I see what you're saying, yep. Yeah. Okay. All righty, so government buildings, um, supplies in town hall went down a thousand. Do you want to? So that was because we had budgeted to replace the chairs you're sitting on, and that was a one time expense. Yes, you're welcome. So, that was brought back 
Um, and then um, we don't have, I'm a little concerned because we don't have a number for sewer and water. So I am a little concerned about that. Um, you mean the, the town's fee? Yeah, that's true. well, the town wide fee that might be going up. For everybody. But every, yeah, but it's not reflected in anything here. Um, we probably should increase the heat because it's very cold in here. I'm just saying. Need to talk to the board of selectmen. <laughs> but uh, no, it's okay. I bought a sweater. Um, electricity. Um, we are happy to report that the fire station, the transfer station, and the highway bond has completed their um, conversion to LED. So we are expecting to have some decreasing in our cost. So that's a good thing, and we paid it out of our uh, our budget uh, this year's budget. So we did not take the loan program; we paid it up front. Um, so let's hope that it says what they said it's going to do, when we start seeing some sight. I went into the fire station yesterday, and you can't even believe how much brighter it is. Mm -hmm. um, so they were very happy about it. Too. I haven't been down to a transfer station, but and that was a 50/50 cost share with yes. um, the efficiency yes. program. So our hope is to do the town hall and the station. We'll have to work looking at our budget to see if we can fit it in this year and not complicate it. And then if not, um, we would do it um, in this budget. So um, heat, um, I think it was based on, on what they spent the last, that's why we're kind of like, there wasn't any reason to believe it would go up necessarily. Right. Um, we have scheduled to have the windows um, in the town hall repaired, um, which we hope will mean that they will close properly. Um, so there should be heat savings, we think, but um, without a year of data, that we, we don't really know. But we should be warmer anyway. Is that other of those repairs? Reflected in line item one. Is that what no, it's supposed to be in this year's no, budget. No, th that's going to be in this year's budget. Oh, so I that's see. already oh, happening. Had, oh, right. I don't know why he hasn't come yet. And we, we've just been having scheduling problems, and then okay. he came and he had the wrong part, so he had to order the parts. Okay. And he had is it all parts. of this floor? All of this floor. Yeah. And and one one or two downstairs. Okay. Because, I mean, um, if there's gaps in them that they, they don't even close completely. It's so, so with the heat in the town hall, the select board had proposed ten thousand dollars last year, and the budget committee moved it back down to nine. The select board's keeping it at nine in hopes that um, the window repair might make a difference. Yeah, mm -hmm. make that okay. Um, okay. So let's go to page three, four. Um, <coughs> So you're seeing a, a decrease in the um, government buildings by um, $5,300. Any questions on the government buildings? All right. Cemeteries, this is based on um, Mark's presentation that he had given you. So, um, and um, insurance, that's just the increase that we're projecting, or is that a firm? Those are, those are firm numbers. Those are firm numbers, okay. Um, regional association, again, firm. Okay. Yes. Um, okay, so we're down to the police department. Um, any questions on Bob presenting his budget? Um, we did for, okay, so we did project 2%. Why is Bob showing 9.4? Because he asked for his extra um, market increase of $5,000 that the board granted him. That's right. So it was 2% on, that's right. It was he actually, he requested a larger than that yes. increase, and the board settled on $5,000. Most of the requests from department heads that the, um, were in salaries. So while, you know, you all have had, been talking a lot about salaries, the board sympathizes with salaries, but wanted to keep it at a 2%. Um, increase overall. So that was one of the ways in which they tried to compromise with the bottom line. Okay. Um, and pretty much we matched anything that uh, the police department. Any questions on on page four because it's pretty much the same as what he was asking for or told you about. And <laughs> the, um, we knew that we had to replace a cruiser video recording system, which he explained to you. <coughs> so his budget. Um, is up 3.1%. Um, 
fire department. Um, no discuss salaries. I have written a proposal to um, to address that. However, I can't share it right now because I haven't shared it with the board of selectmen. So as soon as I do, and if it gets brought forward, um, then we would readdress that with you. Okay. So this is for the fireman sal the firefighter salary at five one forty two. Is that what one forty one and one forty two okay. is being addressed in this proposal? Right. That Thank you. Is there some discussion of the warrant article or something putting something up in the warrant article? For salaries? No, you had us. Oh well, just because we were talking about some major, uh, hmm. the the proposal is in a good size increase, but not as major as I was thinking. People were going down the way you. You were talking, so I was getting a little afraid. <laughs> so it won't be on the word article as far as I'm, I, I'm concerned. Um, I, I believe, um, it, it's my opinion that the board of selectmen will support this. It's, it's reasonable, but it also is bringing us to where we need to be legally um, by law. Um, and, um, and as soon as I can, I'll share it with you. Okay? Right. So, um, there wasn't anything else that uh, we had agreed um, with everything that Mark had brought forward um, for his um, recommendations. So, any further discussion on fire department? Okay. Building inspector, you'll see the increase based on the I told you before, and the increase for the land use administrator. Highway. Um, we have gone with two percent at this point in time. Um, equipment. Um, I was missing that, David. Didn't we have a presentation from uh, from yes. George? Yeah. Yeah. They do. They have requested more, but we're going with two percent. Does it include though, the new position, the new part-time position? The new part-time position is not being recommended by the board of selection. Okay, so this is the same staffing. Same staff, two percent increase. Two percent increase. Okay, thank you. Any other questions on that? No. Okay. Um, I think the the line striping is based on additional ones that he's going to do. He's got the machine, but it's the cost of paint. Correct. Or no, that's the one that we have to hire to come in because it's double line. Yes. Yes. <coughs> okay. So, based on some of the roads, we've had some complaints about some of the roads not being able to be visibly seen the lines anymore. So we're going to be trying to catch up on that and get that done. And also, street sweeping has to be done at least this year with strong water. Two of them, and hopefully, based on what they have found. Um, first time, we don't believe that we'll have to do it again after next year. Well, on just one, right? Maybe not one. But news on that is always changing. I know. Because, um, you know, this coalition um, and its advisors from the state and from UNH um, and whatever other people have determined, you know, it's, it's a group effort and everybody's trying to take a unified approach in what we do or don't do so that we, you know, Hey or not, yeah. You know, whatever <laughs> the phrase is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we, I, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, say anything that, that there's a guarantee because we keep learning more and we can, and, and um, for example, the permit was was the permit whatever the permit said we were going to do, and then you have to file an annual report, and the annual report is supposed to be about what you did your first permit year, but the permit and the and the report didn't match. You know, th there are things coming down from EPA that just don't don't make sense. You know, like the, the permit says that you're going to do A, B, and C, but then the report says A, B, and a half, and a Q. You know, like, and you just don't know what to do with that. So, you know, I, I wish I could say something more definitive. We're hoping we'll be done with two times sweeping after this year, but I, I don't know that. Stay tuned for more info next year. Thanks, Yeah, but that's why we're about to get it for a second one. Um, <coughs> Also, um, I don't know if this number reflects it. Did this, that number reflect the um, George had negotiated for salt? Is that the better? The better um, it has that salt number has not changed, and it has not changed in years. And so sometimes it's overexpended, and, and sometimes it's more or less right on. And I think 
for this year will be right exactly on. So yes, George negotiated a two dollar per ton savings, which should save us fifteen or two thousand dollars, fifteen hundred or two thousand dollars from what it would otherwise be. We don't really know that exactly because you never know what winter is going to be like and how much salt we're going to need. So no, that number wasn't adjusted. So hopefully we're going to stay within that, that budget, but it will help knowing that we had that reduction that George got us. Um, okay, so street lighting, we're um, keeping that the same. Down to sanitation, um, it is 2% uh, across the board. Um, Did we bring that? Or is that the one that we did not do that? What they're saying, the twelve dollar for the for the one person. It is. That, it, it is, is it twelve dollars for the one. It's two for percent the one increase person. for everybody, except one of those people will be at twelve dollars an hour. Everybody, which infers that everybody else is less than that. Um, but that's because of the additional responsibilities that he has. And about, he's been there a long time doing yeah, those right. responsibilities. So he does the he does the bailing um, when. The transfer station is closed. There are other things that he does. That, so he was, um, based on his years of service, he was getting an additional raise. Yes? There was some talk here in the Budget Committee about, I think some of us were swayed at, at, at perhaps the, the good idea of bringing everybody up to at least $12 or something. Is that? Well, there was a conversation that George was saying that our surrounding areas are getting paid more. Do we know what that would cost additionally? Even just roughly. I mean, there there aren't many of them. Part of it depends on whether or not this fourth position that doesn't currently exist will be um, expended or not. Right. So, so that that's part of it. So, so there, there's, there's a fourth position. There's here. an open position that hasn't been able to be filled, okay. and we discussed it with um, George that if that position didn't get filled, possibly the money that's in that position can be distributed among the others. Um, the question was because we got we purchased the scales, there's going to be a little more work to be doing um, to try to prepare everyone to be <coughs> possibly be based on weighing things. But they're not going to things aren't going to change right away for the residents who come in to bring things because there's we're going to have some time to discuss how much a couch really weighs and multiple you know kind of giving an average. And that's going to take a little while. So we're not going to be weighing every single thing that comes in once we get the scales. But it also, but it, there's going to be some additional time to do that. So they may have to have one of their workers, like the, the gentleman that um, is getting the additional pay, to work more there. So then, you know, on other places. And we also talked about maybe having a select date for... Um, for, for demo, only. demo stuff. There, there's not a lot of um, using the scales um, in the way in which we would like to use them is going to be more labor intensive. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a compromise between paying people more and implementing the scales. Um, and so while she, what to, to her point, it's going to take a while to do the research before scales are implemented. But if an increase is given across the board in lieu of this fourth position, and then that may hold back the implementation of the scales. And the sc you know implementing the scales is tied to what are we bringing in in revenue to offset mm -hmm. our disposal fees. So, you know. Yeah, we're we're struggling with that because I don't you know we don't believe that because our numbers are much higher than our revenue sources, we don't believe we're getting enough. But you still have to do the research. Because we're just saying a couch is not the same. Two different couches can weigh a lot of difference in weight. And so you're, you're not, is it more the other way or is it more, it's less weight? We don't know yet. So we're going to have to have some time to figure it out before we can adjust our, which is lots of revenue, you know, because sure, it's too weak to really to understand. This is for stray. Is it a drive on, drive off type of scale? No, it no, it's not. So it will be. You know, you're going to have to put stuff into or on into like a. They're going to have a small, um, a small dumpster, and they're going to tear weight it to zero, and then you can add stuff, and you'll get a printout that says you put right, 20 so pounds, and then they'll tear it back to zero. Yeah. yeah. And that's what makes it labor intensive. But I mean, if we can do some couches and some chairs and some other stuff to get an average, that will even make it. Better. Sure. But we still might be off, clearly, but 
if you can come to a better average. So you do like, to say, the, the next 10 sofas and get, get, mm -hmm. get something like that, and then you wouldn't have to do them anymore. You'd would be an average, them. and this is yeah. what the, and then we'll have our a fee like schedule okay. all done again. Yeah. But there will be, there will be, maybe demo would definitely be more of a, a like, contract, uh, contractor demo. Yeah, so, the, so there's the, how much does a couch weigh, and that's altering the fee schedule, but um, to fully implement the scales to its best potential would mean that you're putting, weighing them individually. Maybe not even couches, but when people come with, you know, I brought in my, my chicken coop that I disassembled and all kinds of pieces of parts, and it's pretty heavy, but I don't know how heavy, and it took up, you know, maybe, you know, a half of a pickup truck load, but I don't have a pickup truck, so I can't even relate it to that. So. You know, they charge me ten dollars. You know, but in terms of what we did, you know, so, so it's it's kind of random. So so figuring out what mattresses weigh and couches weigh isn't going to help people with their demolition debris and the four shingles they bring in. Mm -hmm. So we're still not going to reap the benefit until we're using it really consistently. Mm -hmm. Even if we're just yeah, go ahead and you know, couch thirty dollars over there. You know, um, it's weight. So. It's, it's, can I take, so I think I started with this uh, with the hourly wage of the attendance. So, so I think through all this, I, I think there's a position that you're not filling. You perhaps might use that, might not fill it. Perhaps might use it to supplement additionally some of the hourly wage. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I guess I could just reconcile it thusly in my own head. If you are, if the board feels they're not having trouble finding attendance, then this, this, the wage is okay. If the board finds itself unable to, to fill, it, let's say, a position that opens up, then you make the adjustment, maybe take it for contingency or whatever, and then you come back and talk to us about it. And, I mean, well, the bottom line fair? is this open position has been open for so long because we can't find people to come in and do it. That's why we still have this open here. position. I mean, they have signs up yeah. at the transfer station all the time looking for help so it, it's difficult so you don't want to lose what we have we have some really good people oh, working for us there so you, we should compensate them as much as we can and if we have this unfilled position because we can't get them that's why we're not making it yeah all right so are, are you saying that the likelihood is that you will out of the, this budget be able to increase the hourly wage of the current I believe that we have discussed it, and that is an opportunity that we think that we can do that with that money. The board has not yet made that decision, yeah, but there's a course. consensus that they may be willing to do that. Right. Okay. And that's a, that's a across the board going forward increase. Are you talking about using that money for this year, giving them like a bonus, and then seeing what you have? No, I think it would be changing the hourly so rate. Basically, yeah. raising the rate. Yeah. And, and if and if that line affords it, it could possibly um, help with wages in the in the highway department if the select board wants to entertain that. It's all about how much how far can that line go, and you know the board hasn't made any decisions about that. But you already have the barometer yeah. building it. Yes, exactly. So hopefully that we can do that decision quickly and, and get that going. Um, let's see. Uh, our land free uh, fees um, are increasing, but based on our damage, <coughs> it's going down. Our, our line. Well, so we've split demo and MSW into two separate lines. So now you have not just 211, but 211 and 220, 212. Yeah. So it's increasing quite a bit altogether. Basing on the two of them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's based on the fact that we just have more, we're just, it's usage. Yeah. Yeah. We're just more yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, they're also on the brush chipping. Um, they're reducing it because they are burning um, more, so they're not having to do the brush chipping. So that seems to be working. They have a real good system over there. Um, 219. I'm sorry? 219 has its has way to the Dolva. How much do we spend this year? Um, more than was budgeted. Yeah, I know it was more. Um, it was over eighteen hundred dollars, and it was over a hundred dollars per resident who participated. 
it was extraordinarily expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and the most expensive it's been, but it's based on usage. So that's, that's why we increased it, because we have yes. spent, yeah. I just wonder why there was no number there, that's all. Um, because it's done um, later in the year, so we hadn't yet paid the bill. Because it's already been done, right? It's done in the yes. summer? Yes, okay. and we have by now paid the bill. It was just it, like a month ago. Yeah, it, it was pre really pretty recently. But I know, I know we've paid it, so you'll see that when I get you yeah. the actual October <laughs> numbers. I know it was all of the 16. Alrighty, so they're showing an increase um, in the sanitation budget of 30%, which seems high. <coughs> based on stuff that are out of our control. Um, ambulance is uh, the second year in the contract, so that was um, nothing new. Um, animal control is under police department, and they're getting a 2% as well. Our community assistance isn't going to be changing at all. Um, so when you get down to Parks and Rec, you'll see whether um, Teen Cam uh, saying we're not funding it, but funding it a rec director down there. Any questions? And recommending the same going forward for uh, winter rec basketball. Library closed theirs tonight, and um, the other um, commissions and stuff is remaining the same. And then that is our um, second year in the lens. The second year, is it's that the third. Second, the third year in the debt services? Yes, yeah, third. It'll be the third. With an operating budget of 2% increase. Any other questions? Yes, um, okay, Article 11 of this year's budget was to put in a new boiler. Yeah. They were rolling that over, and 20,000 was coming out of SIP, and 10 was and five was coming out of taxation. Where does that five come in in this budget? It doesn't because it's capital and this is operating. Okay, okay, good. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you. Uh, Talking revenue? Oh, I'm going to get up to you. It's here. 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 Thank you. So I've, I've used the same spreadsheet um, for, for 19, and then later in the, in the year for 19, we have to report to the state what is revised revenue, and then the state adjusts that. Um, so, so that's why you have more history than you would for, for other years. But then there is the anticipated 2020 line. Um, this does not include capital items, because the board has not yet completely decided capital items. Um, the bottom line is that uh, we are projecting to bring in um, $7,200 more in offsetting operating income than um, the previous year. Um, and so, is it? So, so if you look at the very bottom, there's a grand total that's colored, and then there's a line under that. And that's the total revenue without talking about the interfunds for capital items. Oh, I see. I see. So the first pink column is the actual, is what we were anticipating last year. For 19, year. yes. And, and then the next pink column is what we're anticipating. For 2020. And that's where there's just a $17,000 difference. Yes. Um, so, you know, so this does have October, like, uh, figures through October. So um, the major differences are in that we, we um, I guess I'll, I'll take it by section. Um, this is set up according to how DRA categorizes our income, which is not as intuitive and user-friendly as we'd like, but um, nonetheless. Um, land use change tax. Um, 
there's no better place, it, it, it doesn't affect the general fund, so it shouldn't really be there, but at the same time, there's no better place for it to be. So um, DRA has, has kept it there. Um, I'm not anticipating anything for next year, but of course, um, for those of you who went to the Conservation Commission meeting last night, we might get a considerable sum, um, which would not affect the operating budget because it goes into the land use change tax account. So that is why that is the zero. Um, Resident taxes we no longer do. Most of this category doesn't really apply to Rollinsford. Interest on taxes, when people do not pay their taxes when they are due, they are charged an interest rate which is set by, set by statute. That interest rate has been decreased by the legislature from 12% to 8%. So I, uh, we just decreased that line proportionally. So that's what's going on in, in that line, in that section. License permits and fees. So, um, as I remember being on the budget committee myself, being fr frustrated by these lines that are called other. So um, I will sympathize with you for a moment about that and explain other license permits and fees. I'm going to project my frustration onto you. <laughs> so other license permits and fees are um, occupancy permits, alarm permits, planning fees, zoning fees, pistol permits, um, marriage license, births, deaths. Um, and septic review fees and some miscellaneous items. Um, so <coughs> we calculate revenues from those miscellaneous items and they feed into that line um, other licenses, permits, and fees. Um, that's line 16 at the bottom of licenses, permits, and fees. So I'm decreasing that slightly because um, we've, we've had a lot of, you know, a little bit more than usual in planning fees and so I brought that back down to a round number. Um, everything else should be relatively the same. Um, building permits have been pretty steady. Um, the planning board did just approve um, a major subdivision off of Silver Street, so you know there's no way to know how many houses that might generate, but probably not more than the average that's been going on. Um, and then motor vehicles have been holding steady at um, 665. Um, we're we're on target to just about hit that or maybe go slightly over that this year. State sources, um, these are all obviously set by the state. Um, meals and rooms tax, we don't do until <coughs> December, so there's no way to know what that is. So um, that's budgeted to be flat line. Um, the highway block grant, it has been changed slightly according to what the state says will happen. And then in line um, 21, state supplemental, um, the town, the, the legislature um, decided to disperse extra revenues to all the municipalities and we, um, and in two separate disbursements. So we received approximately $26,000 this year as unanticipated revenues. Um, that will go into the general fund. Um, we can do something with that or not do something with that, but right now it's in the general fund. But for next year, because we know it's coming, now it's anticipated revenue of about $26,000. Yes, it is. It would be nicer if they would more consistently fund the things we need them to do, but, you know. True. Okay. <laughs> um, other taxes, railway um, is, is apparently going up. And then line 23 from other governments. Um, we have applied for, and it looks like we are getting a stormwater asset management grant, and this will be its own warrant article. Um, it's going to cost us money, but in the end it will be a short-term loan which will be completely reimbursable. So it's not really going to affect the tax rate, but it is going to, in a minimal way, affect cash flow. There might be um, a small amount of interest paid for, for the purpose, but it's going to help us with part of our permit, um, though it's a little bit separate from the permit too. And so what we're hoping to accomplish with the grant is to um, create a digital map of Rollinsford that has an overlay of our storm drain structures um, and how they interact and where they all are um, that you can zoom in on and see um, when they were last cleaned and um, what their, um, how maintained they are or, or not maintained, you know, what they might need for, for repairs and then where they, where they connect to. Um, we may get as far as cameraing the pipes that connect the catch basins so that we can see um, how 
you know, what, this, what their status is, how, 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 what their life left might be. So um, part of the permit is about making sure our assets are in good repair because that makes sure that things get into the river in, in a clean way. For example, by the Legion, with sinkholes, that's indicative of, you know, culverts collapsing, which means dirt's getting in there, which means dirt's getting out into the river, which is extra nutrients that shouldn't be there in silt and so forth. And so that's part of what we're trying to minimize. Um, the hope also someday is that having this <coughs> map and really being aware of um, these assets and, and what their um, state is, is that it can play into road maintenance so that we know that when we're doing certain roadways that we really should replace the structures underneath or else we really don't have to because they're fine. So that's what that's about. Um, we're lucky to have it seems so far received that grant, but we have to formalize it through um, a approval at town meeting. That's the part that I'm. I'm so they they see they they're telling us they're getting it. You know that that so far we're on. I, I'm not sure that we have our technical last bit of you know all all eyes dotted and t's crossed. You know we're we're in a fate. I, I have emails that I have to check about that, but um, so far things look good, but. Um, I, I believe, and I could stand corrected, but at this point I believe we are approved for it, and as soon as we get approval in town meeting, we can start implementing it. But should the town, in its infinite wisdom, decide not to, to do this, then we wouldn't get the 30000 Correct. So that's, because it, it would be a, a wash. Right? Okay. Income from departments. Um, so, um, that is another conglomeration of items. Um, the library um, has a small book sale. They get copy fees. Parks and Rec gets their registration fees. Um, police have um, their outside details and parking fines and restitution. We have animal violations when people don't register their dogs. And then, of course, um, transfer station fees, um, stickers, but also um, when um, we sell scrap metal or people pay us for um, demolition debris and like that. So that is um, income from the departments. So, so Caroline, how much of that is police detail? And because I'm, I'm anticipating that it's a big, a, a big number, and how confident are, you, are we that they will reach that? Because that's been a, it was, it was that, that's a really been good problematic. Question. Well, so that's a really good question. So it's, um, we, pay our officers about between approximately a half and two-thirds of what we get in revenue from details. And that varies based on who's doing the details. Um, so there's no way to have an actual direct correlation with what we're budgeting for details and what we're bringing in the revenue. So that being said, whatever we do in, in, in detail is a, is a profit for the town. It accounts for um, the vehicle and the officer. So right now the number in there is 35735 um, which I, I, I would have to check where that number comes from. I, that might be an actual year to date I, I don't, for, for this year. I, I don't know that without checking again. I'd have to look. Um, so whatever you allow on the expense side, um, you don't have to expend unless you have the opportunity to expend it. But whatever you bring to offset the <laughs> revenue is going to be, you know, at least a third more than what you're expending. Right. But if we badly underestimate, so we use that overage, you know, the we bring in more revenue than we than we expend. Right. But if we've budgeted anticipated revenue more than what we received, that right. that oh, that's being used to sort of subsidize the rest of the yes. operating budget. Yes. So, if we don't bring it in, then it has an impact right. on the tax rate. So, this approximate third of that value that's a profit, so to speak, can offset other things. And if you don't bring that in, yes, you're not expending the money, but, but that's, that's pure profit that you could put on something else that's not happening. And it's hard to project that. It, it's, administrative, that we, it's administrative expense. It's really not profit. Well, I you understand. Know, RRS, I understand. I, I, you know, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I know that we had brought in as much as we had thought we were going to do, but that was because of so many people that left the police department at the right time. We weren't able to accept those jobs because we had, we had to do, the opportunities. We just didn't. We have just the staff. had the opportunities, but now we are full staff, 
and we're anticipating that so we will have the opportunity yes. and yes. accept those opportunities to be able to yes. do that. Yes, so he's more confident that we'll get closer to yes. that okay. yes. next year. Yeah. So, Caroline, did you say that within income from departments, that also includes the fees that the transfer station collects for the demo drop-off? Yes. But do we have, is, is that 153 or whatever the actual, like, do we know what that actual is breakdown is between the tip, between the demo fee, between the, 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 um, the police department covering stuff? Yes. Uh, so I have year-to-date actuals, but I don't. I don't know um, what the date is that through which I have these act actuals. So demo, I have approximately fourteen thousand five hundred year-to-date um, fees for um, refrigerators, tires, or, you know, other miscellaneous items. Um, Thirty-eight hundred scrap metal. Um, we sell the scrap metal. That's thirty-three hundred cardboard. Two thousand and $3,700 in stickers. And what did you say the demo number was? Demo right now is at $14,589. Um, but like I said, I don't know if that's through the end of September or the end of October. And I think it's October, but I'm not, you know, I'm not sure. So so these are the numbers, like when you look at, um, you know, the transfer station going up 30% and right. we're not meeting it in revenue. But see, where I was getting to is that revenue that comes in for the demo fees compared to even the year to date for September for the demo hauling of 18 already indicates that we're, you know, if, if it's all being equal, it already indicates we're, for, we're, we're undercharging by $4,000. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so hauling is one thing. So for, for both demo and MSW, you're paying by weight, mm -hmm. but then you're paying additionally per haul. Okay, so that 213 is really just the haul, the weight is... The tipping fee. The tipping fee. Yes. So there are two charges. Oh, okay. But both. even, so it's even worse then. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so I mean, isn't really a quick fix at the demo fee at the transfer station is to think about, okay, you said you brought in your chicken coop for 10 bucks. I mean, it's almost like if you think it's 10, really charge 20 because it's a pretty good deal, right? We've all gotten rid of stuff before. So is that a quick fix? From the trip for the transfer station to try to be a little, you know, realize here are some actuals and you are undercharging, and therefore what you should charge should be a lot. We know we're undercharging, why not boost it? Yeah. Already, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. it is, seems to be kind of like an eyeball thing. When I brought stuff in, it's kind of like, yeah, yeah it's maybe very discretionary. <laughs> right. okay. yeah, good, yeah. That's why they want to go to the land. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, why oh, oh, I know, I know. But even before all that happened, it's yeah, like I think that. we'll talk to George and Ed and see if we can kind of go down there. Yeah. Triple the cost for now, okay. and then make your double ones this week. Yeah, get rid of everything quick. Yeah, but that's no, but it is a pretty good deal. I mean, it's a great service to have. I think well, you know, between the tipping and the tra and the hauling. And even the extra service that the guys have to put into it. I mean, it just should be a full cost, and people would still be happy. Yes. Yeah. Um, but let me provide for you some context. Um, we're currently paying approximately $69 a ton to dispose of MSW or mm -hmm. demo. Um, that is because we have a contract through our regional co-op with waste management. Um, it's a 10-year contract. We're in, I think, year four. Other communities are paying $100, $120 a ton. So when this contract expires, you know, we hope that we can keep this group pricing, but the group might dissolve, or you know, they might just not provide that same kind of pricing. So um, I anticipate and I'm advocating for a lot of aggressive changes at the transfer station because we got to prepare, prepare for what for a sure. potential huge uptick. So. You're right, it's a great deal, and that's a problem because the surrounding communities pay per throw. You know, they pay for their bags, and so we've got, you know, people who want to continue using our transfer station after they move away, or they want to bring in their brother's trash, or they have property, you know, their landlord, and they just want to bring it in. So, as long as we're not doing the pay per throw, which I know all the residents hate to do because it's annoying, um, we're going to be you know, targeted as the cheap good deal or the free deal for the trash. Um, composting, I don't know if you've noticed that some of the lower level, like, like the, the, the less pricey restaurants locally use a commercial composting service, Mr. Fox. Mm -hmm. um, so you have recycling and, and trash and then compost and you can put silverware in it and, you know, various items. Um, 
plastic. Plastic. Plasticware that's not really plastic. Yeah. Um, Cornstarch. Cornstarch. <coughs> yeah. So they buy. Yes. Yeah. So they have now gone up to the municipal scale of this, and Portsmouth is doing it. Um, approximately a third of trash weight is compost. So you have to buy special bags, which maybe as a town we could subsidize. If they're not already less expensive, we might subsidize them to um, try to incentivize people to compost. And you can bring them in your special bags, and there's a compost pile, and then they kind of <laughs> take that at a cheaper price than the tipping fee. But it also keeps that stuff out of the trash and incentivizes recycling. Because when, when throwing things away is free, you have no incentive to compost at home or recycle. So I would suggest that we um, still require people to bring in their registration to get a transfer station sticker, but that the sticker be free. And that they're paying for bags, and they're paying less for, for compost bags. And then, you know, will not be feeling the pressure from the region for all these other people who, you know, want the cheap deal. So that's the long term view, yeah. but not this year. But in the meantime, though, <laughs> Joe has a good idea that yes. we should, you know, well, maybe well, the board can. And also, how about we build some awareness that, you know, I mean, it's, it's not, not really hard to throw your compostable stuff into the woods. Well, pile. but do it responsibly because we get code issues about they see a rat and of course yeah, yeah, yeah. rats live in the world, but because your neighbor has a compost pile, clearly it's because of the compost pile Definitely. and then you get like, yes. so, yeah. so we have to be careful about the yeah, indication yeah. of that, but yes, but It could absolutely. save a significant amount of money, clearly, absolutely. if people would just take it upon themselves yes. to perhaps. Yes, and you get more mileage fashion. out of the bag that you're paying to throw away. Right. Yes. Because you're taking a, you know, yes. a third, maybe, of its volume out of there. So we'll see if that happens or not. Um, so anyway, um, income from departments. It's, it's all the departments, essentially. And I've decreased it um, rather arbitrarily by $10,000 due to team camp going away. But otherwise, pretty level. Um, sale of municipal property, we um, were fortunate that the highway department was able to um, not put its truck out to bid as we would have done in the past, but they actually did a private sale, which... Um, well, we actually had to put it out to bid. But well, we did private bid. Did it, it was the same person. person. Yes, we, we did but it. But we have to put it out for bid. Yes, we did. Yes. We put it out to sale, and then, and then we, out, oh, yes, yeah, the we bid. Had to put it, and then, yeah, yeah. yeah that it was, was only one person and the same person. So. Right. right. Okay. So what, we're putting that down to um, what we closer to what we might do in a given year. So that's for cemetery lots and vehicles. Um, we'll have at least one cruiser, but possibly two to get rid of. Um, interest on investments, we have a treasurer who's doing an incredible job and has diverted most of our cash into an investment account, which has got a much better yield than um, we've been receiving. So that's up quite a bit. It, it's it's phenomenal. So I'm, what my question is, it's just a different account? It's a different kind of account. <laughs> so and maybe I, my I real question is, is it reproducible? I mean, in other words, should the treasurer be replaced by another treasurer? Do we know what this magic sauce is, the secret sauce is that he's doing, so that it's reproducible by another treasurer? Because the difference, this I mean, is this is subsidizing, astounding. it's astounding. This is subsidizing a lot of expense sure. on our appropriation size to go yes. side yeah. to go from five hundred to thirty-six thousand dollars, and you'd hate to lose that. So, sure. So, is there any documentation? Is there's there any no documentation. We have no documentation of, of, of you know, you know yourself of nearly anything here in town, and so this is no exception. So, I think it's a it's a phone call to Citizens Bank to say. What kind of account is this again? You know, I can, I know, you know, we're still at the point of institutional knowledge where we have, you know, and that's all that exists around here. Nothing is documented. You know, the board is taking a really, you know, aggressive approach in trying to implement policy, but, and that's great, and it needs to happen, and they should be applauded for that, because that's a lot of work for them. But it's, you know, so, so that's a heavier lift in my office in preparing for that, which is, 
distracting from the fact that, yes, aside from policy, we still need to document what we do so that other people well, can come in and do it. Well, we don't have maybe, that. maybe, you know, maybe I don't mean like just document, but it, 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 does somebody know what's going on so that it could be reproducible? I don't I, I do know what he does. So, so the tax bills go out twice a year. After we get the bulk of the cash, he moves the bulk of the cash over into the investment account and it sits there. We pay the school a large sum from their, what we raise in taxes for them, we pay that monthly, it comes directly out of the investment account so that it stays there as long as possible. And then he transfers money into the operating checking account as needed until we get into like cash crunch time. Um, and he's freaking out right now because, you know, we're only barely, right. it's cash crunch time. Um, and so, you know, he's got, both kind of near zero and mostly in the operating budget. But then next month, as we've got all the tax money in, he's going to make major transfers into the investment account again. Well, it is an astounding difference, and my hat's off to the yes. treasurer. Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. We're all benefiting from that. That's good. Um, other. Other. <coughs> other. Okay, so other is our cell tower lease. The select board um, renewed the lease on the cell tower, which should generate more income. Um, it's not really clear, but we were told by the management firm that um, they don't really, that, that cell companies don't really want to upgrade their equipment on towers that have um, leases that are near to expiring, which means like within 15 or 20 years. So the board, um, within the last year, extended the cell tower lease for another 75 years, I believe. So that should help that revenue. Um, so in any case, other means cell tower lease, hydro, rents on properties, which is really just um, the Turcot field next to Scotland is rented by a farmer who pays $1,500 a month for that and also um, tomb rentals, should somebody pass away in winter, they're put in the tomb and pay a rental fee for that until they can be buried in spring. Um, reimbursements, like ho Homeland Security reimbursements go in this line, and then miscellaneous reimbursements, um, like when people bounce checks and, and they bring it back, that's, um, that's in here. And then other miscellaneous revenue. Um, and other miscellaneous revenue, um, I don't have a breakdown of that. I'm showing, um, what is that? So it's the historical committee, but the, the historical committee isn't very much of that. They do sales, so, um, historical committee. I, I just, I, I raised my own question, so I will get back to you about what other miscellaneous revenue is within the other line <laughs> in the um, miscellaneous revenue category. Oh, it's the hydro. I moved hydro. That's what it is. So my question was about hydro. What is, it is hydro. How is hydro trending? That's that's one. And two, what are the are the relicensing groups <coughs> uh, anticipating a decrease in the revenue because of the changes to our new license? Because what I mean, one of the things that I know that they were talking about was having to reduce because of the EPA and concerns about fish life is to reduce the amount of, I don't know what the technical terms are, but the throughput of the amount of water that, they, that can be used, yes. which would reduce the, the revenue. Do you um, I'm not sure that that's true, because there, there is part of the relicensing, they've had to do work to the dam, which includes replacing the boards along the top of the dam um, that have worn away and they get knocked off by tree limbs and such, and so they've replaced those. And I believe part of the reason for that is because it helps to direct water through where um, um, no, the no, river, the river the run or something. The stock, the stock. Penstock? Penstock, thank you, thank you. Um, through Penstock. So I, I don't know that that's true. I, I'm, I'm not the engineer of these things. So as far as trending goes, I don't really have an answer for that. We seem pretty level, but I don't know what that means for the new license. And I don't think anything about the license necessarily changes our contract with them. And I have to look at our contract with Green Mountain Power, which is different from the renewal with FERC. Right. My concern is that, that, that the changes to the licensing 
you know, the requirements will, will result in Green Mountain being able to generate less power and therefore we would get less revenue. It's not happening now. I think, what is it, 2020? Next year, I think it is. Is it? 2021? I think it's 20. 20? 20. 20. 20. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the dam by the mill? Yes. That's upstream the, of the mill. And the Cumberland Farms, that's Berwick or South Berwick? That's South Berwick. Okay. So is the relicensing likely to have an impact on our hydro revenue? Not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware of. Might it be a good question to ask Green Mountain? I can see what our contract says and when our contract expires because I think that's really... Yes, I will look into it. I'm not it. sure that that's relevant only because it's, it's the amount of... It's not a question of the contract we have with Green Mountain. It's a question of is the, the licensing going to, going to require <laughs> things that we're reduce the flow. I will get back to you all. Yes. Thank you. So, in any case, um, given given what we see of the operating budget, which does not include interfund operating, is 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 entirely to do with capital items. So, we are um, close to level off about seven thousand dollars from previous year up about seven thousand dollars but as we discussed about where those things come from you know we don't really know we never really know is there any questions about that nice job thank you thank you Carol thank you very much so do we have any other business we want to bring up at nine o'clock what's the next the next is the next meeting is the fourth yes is December fourth at six PM at six PM and that's the one where we have um water and sewer first, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll do the first day of the session. Okay. Which can only be town and possibly water if we're ready, because we will not approve the school until Correct. That's, that's why we yeah. And uh, I will not be here on the 11th, but Suzanne has agreed to chair the meeting. Uh, I have a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye.